Good morning and welcome to Central Presbyterian on the Sunday after Christmas. This year we're doing something a little different for that Sunday. We're joining with churches throughout our presbytery for a service that's been prepared by the presbytery staff and worship committee. Uh, the churches, the 60 churches of our presbytery are worshiping together this morning with service of lessons and carols and a show of unity throughout our presbytery. So we very much hope that you'll enjoy participating in this unified worship service today. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Christ is born. Hallelujah. Jesus is among us. Hallelujah. Shout with joy, give thanks, and sing. Christ is born. Shout with joy, give thanks, and sing. Christ is born. Shout with joy, give thanks, and sing. Christ is born. Let us pray. Saving God, the prophet Anna and righteous Simeon sang your praise and proclaimed Jesus our Lord to all who were looking for redemption of Jerusalem. We seek redemption in our day. Prepare our hearts to believe the good news of Jesus. Receive the light of salvation and live according to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
us turn to our call to confession. We have all sinned. Not one of us is clean. But there is mercy for those who call on the name of the Lord. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sins before God and one another with this prayer of confession. Let us pray together. Holy and loving God, we look for you in the joyous, festive, and holy places. Forgive us when we do not look for you in the hard times and the painful places, or among those who are abused or forgotten, homeless or hungry. We listen to Christmas stories and sing Christmas carols. Forgive us when we fail to notice what you teach us, what you ask of us in the stories of the birth and life of Jesus. As we celebrate the birth of one born homeless who lived in poverty, whose family fled in fear for their lives, pursued by a ruthless dictator, help us to remember your compassion and care for all who are vulnerable and in need. Forgive us when we forget what Jesus showed us by his life and move us to respond to your gracious gift of love by lovingly opening our arms to all people. Amen. In God's mercy, God offers forgiveness and salvation. In love, God redeems us, lifts us up, and carries us. Thanks be to God. The story of the birth of Jesus the Christ is told over and over again. It is the story of God becoming one of us so that we might know how to love and serve God all of our days. But the stories between the birth and the childhood of Jesus of Nazareth are not often read as a continuous story. Today we will hear them, told not just by Luke and by Matthew, but by hymn writers of old and new, who lead us to hear the story for our lives today. They highlight light and our search for peace and a call to work for justice for all the world. 
we stand first with Joseph, who rather than humiliate Mary, wants to call off their engagement quietly, a kind bit of diplomacy. And then there's Simeon, who encounters the Lord's Christ, as the common English Bible translates, translation calls Jesus, in the Jerusalem temple. Simeon now knows he can die in peace because salvation has come in Jesus to Jews and also to non-Jews. New life, new hope, says the African-American hymn, Jesus, oh what a wonderful child. Light of all nations, light up our way, invites the newer hymn, Mary and Joseph came to the temple. There are the magi who honor the baby and attempt to thwart the evil king Herod's power grab. There's the escape to Egypt for refugees seeking asylum from terror, seeking peace when there is no peace at home. And as we sing the new hymn, Jesus Entered Egypt, let us ponder the welcome required of us if we are to live up to Jesus' call to welcome the lowly. And on the return of the Holy Family, there's the time of preparation to demonstrate the life to which we are called, a life shown to us by the Messiah, the Lord's anointed, whose life guides our feet into the way of peace. Friends, listen. It is an old, old story, but its meaning will show us the way to live in the new year and in all the years to come. A reading from Matthew 1, verses 18 through 24. The birth of Jesus. This is how the birth of Jesus took place. When Mary, his mother, was engaged to Joseph, but before they were married, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man. Because he didn't want to humiliate her, he decided to call off their engagement quietly. As he was thinking about this, an angel from the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because the child she carries was conceived by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Now all of this took place so that what the Lord had spoken through the prophet would be fulfilled. Look, a virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did just as an angel from God commanded and took Mary as his wife. Jesus What a wonderful child, Jesus, Jesus, so holy, meek and mild, new life, new hope the child will bring, listen to the angels sing. Wonderful child, Jesus, Jesus, so holy, meek and mild, new life, new hope, the child will bring, listen to the angels sing, glory, glory, glory.
Jesus is presented in the Jerusalem temple, Luke chapter 2, verses 21 through 38. When eight days had passed, Jesus' parents circumcised him and gave him the name Jesus. This was the name given to him by the angel before he was conceived. When the time came for their ritual cleansing in accordance with the law of Moses, they brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. It is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male will be dedicated to the Lord. They offered a sacrifice in keeping with what's stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. A man named Simeon was in Jerusalem. He was righteous and devout. He eagerly anticipated the restoration of Israel and the Holy Spirit rested on him. The Holy Spirit revealed to him that he wouldn't die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Led by the Spirit, he went into the temple area. Meanwhile, Jesus' parents brought the child to the temple so that they could do what was customary under the law. Simeon took Jesus in his arm and praised God. He said, Now, Master, let your servant go in peace according to your word, because my eyes have seen your salvation. You prepared this salvation in the presence of all peoples. It is a light for revelation to the Gentiles and a glory for your people Israel. His father and mother were amazed by what was said about him. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This boy is a sign to be the cause of the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that generates opposition so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your innermost being too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, who belonged to the tribe of Asher. She was very old. After she married, she lived with her husband for seven years. She was now an 84 year old widow. She never left the temple area, but worshiped God with fasting and prayer night and day. She approached at that very moment and began to praise God and to speak about Jesus to everyone who was looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Mary and Joseph came to the temple, brought the boy Jesus of great opportunity to be with you this morning. I'm so glad to see you all and I hope that each one of you had a very, very wonderful Christmas. But today I want to talk to you about what happens in the Christmas story after baby Jesus is born. We know that it is such a wonderful gift that we were given when baby Jesus was born. But after baby Jesus was born, some magi came to see him. And I brought some for you to see. Now, we don't really know what they looked like. And you may have a nativity at your house that has some too. And you know, I have three nativities at my house and they all look different. You may have seen some if you've been out driving around looking at Christmas lights, or you may have some at your church that you've seen before, or maybe you've seen online. I really like these and they have beautiful gifts. Well, I wanna tell you a little story 
out of the Gospel of Matthew about what happened. And it said, some magi came to visit Jesus. Magi are sometimes called the wise ones or star watchers. Now the Magi weren't Jewish like Mary and Joseph and Jesus. They came from a country very, very far away and they said, we've been looking at the stars. We think the stars tell us that a ruler has been born for the Jewish people. But where can we find this child, they asked. Well, Herod was the king of the Jewish people, but he was a very bad person. He was afraid that someone might try to be king instead of him. So when Herod heard that the Magi were looking for, he was afraid. Herod had a meeting with the people who helped him. Where do the prophets say that the Messiah, God's chosen one, was born? Herod asked. And Herod's helpers looked in all the old books and said, in Bethlehem. That's what's written in the books. So Herod gathered the Magi and he talked to them. This new ruler of the Jews is supposed to be born in Bethlehem, Herod told them. So why don't you go there and look for this child and come back and tell me so I can take him some gifts too? Well, Herod was lying to them. Herod wanted to go there and get rid of this baby so it wouldn't grow up to be king. So the Magi went to Bethlehem and they saw the brightest star they had ever seen up in the sky. That star must be leading us, they said. Look, it has stopped moving now. That must be the place where we will find this child. And that is how the Magi found Jesus. They gave Jesus some very nice gifts. There was shining gold, there was sweet smelling incense, and a perfume called myrrh. But that night, one of the Magi had a dream, and the dream told him, don't go back to Herod, the dream said, because Herod wants to kill this baby. So the Magi, went back to their home by another way. So they followed that star and they brought their gifts. These magi have special gifts too. And they brought their special gifts to the baby. But then they went home a different way because they didn't want Herod to know that they had found that special baby. So I bet that you have special gifts too. I bet you have very special gifts that you would give to a baby too. You know that God gives each of us special gifts, gifts that we can share with others because one of the gifts that God gives to us is love, love that we can share with people everywhere. So I want you to be thinking about as we get ready for a brand new year, did you know a brand new year is just a few days away? As we get ready for that new year, I want you to think of ways that you can share the gift of God's love with people that you know and even with people that you don't know. So let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you for the gifts of the Magi, for the gifts of the precious baby Jesus, and the gift of love that you give each one of us. Help us look for ways, especially in this new year, that we can share the gift of your love with people that we know and that people with, that we don't know so that all can know of your love. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen.
Listen to the words of scripture as they come to us from Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 through 15. When the Magi had departed, an angel from the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod will soon search for the child in order to kill him. Joseph got up, got up during the night, took the child and his mother to Egypt. He stayed there until Herod died. This fulfilled what the Lord had spoken to the prophet. I have called my son out of Egypt. Joseph, Mary, and Jesus return from Egypt. Matthew chapter 2, verses 19 through 23. After King Herod died, an angel from the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Get up, the angel said, and take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. Those who were trying to kill the child are dead. Joseph got up took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus ruled over Judea in place of his father Herod, Joseph was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he went to the area of Galilee. He settled in a city called Nazareth, so that what was spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. <laughs>
us now affirm what we believe using the words of a Christmas creed. We believe in Jesus Christ and the beauty of the gospel born in Bethlehem. We believe in the one whose spirit glorified a little town, whose spirit still brings light to all creation. We believe in the one the rulers of the earth ignored and the proud could never understand, whose life was among common people, who was most welcome among the least and lowly, We believe in the one who proclaimed the love of God to be invincible. We believe in the one whose cradle was a mother's arms and whose bed was a feeding trough, whose modest home in Nazareth had little wealth but lots of love, who helped people see themselves as God saw them who lifted human weakness up to meet the strength of God. We confess our everlasting need of God, the need for forgiveness for our selfishness and greed, the need of new life for weary souls, the need of love for hearts grown cold. We believe in God who gives us the best of himself. We believe in Jesus, the son of the living God, born in Bethlehem for us and for the whole world. Amen. Our prayers of the people is a responsive prayer. When I say, God of love, please respond, guide our feet into the way of peace. Let us pray. Living God, you came among us to show us great love. While you were most vulnerable in dangerous political times, living under a king willing to take the lives of innocent children to hold onto power, you lived as a refugee. You knew fear and flight, relied on the kindness of strangers, returned to uncertainty and unrest. Was your prayer, God of love, guide our feet into the way of peace? You lived your life as one of us, knowing play and work, finding friendship and fierce resistance, seeking God in times of solitude and meeting crowds of thousands who cried out for healing, teaching those who asked you, God of love, guide our feet into the way of peace. Heal and teach us, God who chose to be one of us, We bring our broken hearts, our ill bodies, our troubled minds, our fearful spirits. We bring our long list of friends and family who need healing and help and relief from hardships sometimes they only know. We bring the despair of those without work, those who live in daily fear of bullies and blatant prejudice and racism, those whose dreams have come crashing down around them, those who don't know where their next meal will come from. God of love, guide our feet into the way of peace. Show us how to live fully and freely in this new year, how to face uncertainty, how to stand up to the misused power, how to stand with the poor, how to work for justice, how to find courage, how to identify partners, how to love our enemies, how to love you more fully and freely in this new year. God of love, guide our feet into the way of peace. Call us to peace, make us crave peace, teach us the meaning of peace, compel us to work for peace, give us your peace. God of love, guide our feet into the way of peace. For we love and live and pray in the name of the Prince of Peace, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. With grateful hearts, let us offer our gifts to God, trusting that they empower the work of the church and the world God loves, welcoming the stranger, giving sanctuary to the immigrant and the refugee among us, and proclaiming the good news of God who became one of us in Jesus the Christ. He came down that we might have love. He came down that we might have love. He came down that we might have love. Hallelujah forevermore. He came down that we might have light. He came down that we might have light. He came down that we might have light. Hallelujah forevermore. He came down that we might have peace. He came down that we might have peace. He came down that we might have peace. Hallelujah forevermore. He came down that we might have joy. He came down that we might have joy. He came down that we might have joy. Hallelujah forevermore. In this gifting season, O oh God, we are grateful for the gift of your dear Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Receive, we pray, all offering we bring. May they be used in the service of your grace and truth dwelling among us. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet in the way of peace. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you this day in the days to come. Amen. Amen.